Rosie is based on Rosie the Riveter, the very famous icon during World War II era to get women involved in a lot of the mechanical work. We use foam for the head as well as some of the parts. So even though it was relatively basic, it was still, you know, an achievement because we worked overnight. We started off with a remote control car and then we used the chassis of the car to experiment with the robot on top of that. I split Rosie into two electrical circuits. The um, bottom portion was meant for the movement of the robot controlled by a mobile app, and the top portion was meant to capture their facial expressions and, as a response, offer to shake their hand. The app that was meant to control the car base wasn't actually working, and we spent a lot of time on the app, like looking at all the settings, but it turns out that we just hadn't connected the Wi-Fi antenna to the hardware. It was just, you know, really cool to, you know, not have to worry so much about having to, you know, create a, you know, whole new library and whole new set of tools and instead use, you know, what was already available to get started a lot quicker. When I heard that they were going to you know, have a third party developer um, finish sort of the design work that I was working on and then to see it in person and see that it was literally <laughs> the same height as me, maybe a little bit taller with the wheels, I was beyond ecstatic about it. It was really cool. When we first got the project for Rosie, there was a prototype and our job was to make it bigger, make it so she could take pictures with you, drive around an event, and make her have a, a large presence in a conference setting. There are some really big motors down in that base. They're actually from an electric wheelchair. We have two car batteries wired together in series to make sure she has enough voltage and enough amperage to be able to get around. The board inside Rosie is capable of uh, all kinds of different ML functions. Uh, it's connecting with uh, Google APIs, so by adding some external sensors to her, we're able to increase her functionality and interact with people at a much higher level. You can actually do on-device processing and use all the Google services that are actually available and pick and choose the APIs that you really wanted to, to use. The biggest thing that I learned was to use the platform itself. Now it has inspired me to start new projects and it's become so easy to work on them. With Android Things, it's really cool because it allows you to, you know, just jump in. The Android Things team has a lot of support on their website and has a lot of tooling that's readily available so you don't have to just start from scratch. Try out a few code labs. Once you try a code lab or two, you will get the hang of it and then you can build your dream project. Give it a try. Go download Android Studio, get a Raspberry Pi, get one of our development kits, and just get started.